I know people listening to this, I'm sure if you're entrepreneurial at all, at all you have more than one idea and you want to do multiple things and you want to do multiple businesses. Don't, with the caveat, until your first business has at least a certain, whatever that threshold is. For me, it's like if my business isn't doing like a million bucks, I'm not looking to start another one. I want it stable. I want systems. I want everything in a process. Welcome to the From Spaghetti to Growth podcast. I'm your host, Seam Alexander, a business growth strategist and advisor and creator of the Unique Method. In each episode, I have unfiltered conversations with successful founders, CEOs, and experts where we delve into their business journeys of how they went from chaos to growth and everything in between. If you're an entrepreneur seeking inspiration, tips, and strategies to take your business to the next level and turn your spaghetti into growth, this is the podcast for you. Now let's start growing. Ever since creating the world's first sports training membership site in the late 90s, Ryan Lee has personally built five seven-figure and two eight-figure businesses and coached over 100,000 successful students all while working from home and never missing a single one of his four kids' activities. Because of his success, Ryan has been called the world's leading lifestyle business entrepreneur by Entrepreneur Magazine, been featured in so many books and on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Listen. I interviewed Ryan and we went deep, deep into his spaghetti, deep into his growth, and deep into his spaghetti again. So you don't want to miss this episode. Hello, hello. I am so excited to get our podcast episode started with Ryan Lee, serial entrepreneur, founder of Freedom, and so much more. We're going to learn so much more about Ryan and his journey from moving from spaghetti to growth in this podcast. Ryan, thank you for being here with me. I am ready to make some spaghetti, Seema. I appreciate yes. having me on. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. One of my first questions for you is, what was the driving force for you to even start a business? Like, how did it even come to fruition? So you have to go back a long time. The, the very first business I did, believe it or not, 1985. So I, was, I was 13 years old and I was obsessed with baseball cards. That was my life. So I, I had the best business in the world. I would go to the baseball card store for my birthday, for Hanukkah, like for everything. And then my parents would get me cards and then I would sell them. And I'd, I started having success. I actually took out ads in magazines and I was selling them online. People oh would send God. me cash. I, would, I typed up a thing on a typewriter, like a, a sheet of all my cards. People would, they would come to my house. I'll never forget one night my mom said, Ryan, there's a strange man at the door. And he said, He's here to buy baseball cards. And then I like went in the basement with, but she's like, I don't know if I like this. Uh, so that was, was kind this of my... before Craigslist? Were you doing this on Craigslist or was this just, this, this was the eighties, the eighties, this was, yeah, this was, this was 1985. So there was you yeah. know, no internet. No, it was crazy. Um, sure. So I survived that. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of had the bug, but I went to college. I started working. I spent the first six years working in a children's hospital, um, doing, recreational therapy. But on the side, I, be, I did private personal training because I just I wasn't making any money. And I loved training people. And I was at college. And then this internet thing started to happen. So the late 90s, I had my, I was working full time at the Children's Hospital. And I started doing, I started a, a new company training young athletes at their houses, at, at sports training facilities. And the internet, I'm like, you know what, maybe I can have this, a website put up for me. So I bought a book and a software program called Front Page 98. Okay. And I built a website. It took me like weeks. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I started writing articles. And I'm getting to the point. So all of a sudden, I started getting email from people all over the world. I remember I got an email from someone in Japan asking me training questions. I'm like, this is I was living in my parents' basement. It was insane. And then I started learning about marketing. I'm like, all right, maybe there's something. Maybe I can make a business out of it because I wanted to always be a publisher. I wanted to publish a magazine. I'm like, but maybe I could do this online. And then I started selling fitness training equipment. I started selling training programs for people. They, they would pay me like $99 and I would write up like a six-week training program. And that was really the bug. So I spent the first few years just doing, on, doing online fitness, selling programs, selling equipment, selling uh, VHS tapes of training. I didn't know it was going to be what it became. I always thought, hey, if I could make you know, five, 10 grand extra a year online, I'd be happy. 
I, I never said, I'm going to be this, you know, successful entrepreneur and especially teach marketing. What the hell was I to teach marketing? I didn't, I never went to school for that stuff. So I just, that was, but I got the bug, you know, once you, you started making art. Yeah. Yeah. The bug. Yeah. Came. No, no. I, I love it. Cause there's a lot of history. And when you start young and you're like, well, how do I sell this? And then your passion comes into it and then it builds. But I have so much more to dig into because there are a lot of people that might be listening that actually don't know what this has become. So maybe yeah. if you just give me a sec, like a, a like a two minute sort of just overview, Ryan, of where you are today, and then what I do want to do is step back because I want to really go okay. into. It sounds so great to say, "Hey," and I know this was just the beginning of like these uh, fitness sort of uh, the fitness business, and we're going to mm -hmm. go into freedom and other things. But I want to go into the weeds a little bit because I want people Absolutely. to hear. It's not just about the content. How did it actually happen? What did it take? So let's go into like a two minute sort of, all right, now what? And where you're okay. at today. So they have context and then we can go from there. Yeah. So, so where, well, I'll, so where I'm at today is, so like every entrepreneur, there are seasons, there are cycles, you know, I, and, and I know we're going to get into it. Like I had, it, it was this, ex, this growth and ex, explosive growth for years, for about a decade. And I was kind of on top of the world and it crashed. You know, I started drinking my own Kool-Aid. I built up, I had two companies at the time that I built up to seven figures a month in revenue. Now, we're gonna, and we'll talk about this. There's a big difference between seven figures a month in revenue and seven figures a month in your pocket, right? I learned that. And I learned that as I was trying to scale, bloat increases, profits go down, like much more stress. And, I, and over the years, I built a bunch of different companies, still mostly in health and fitness, started teaching marketing more and more. Now, I just recently exited from one of my nutrition companies just about a month ago. So, and because a few months ago, I hit 50. And I don't know, maybe it's a midlife crisis. And my oldest daughter is now a sophomore in college because I have four kids. My other one's a junior in high school, a freshman in high school, and then seventh grade. It's like, it's going fast. So I'm like, I just, I almost want to have like a fire sale. So I I sold a lot of my companies. And now I'm almost back to the beginning. It's really, really simple. I've been blessed over the years. So I don't have to work. I just love this. So now I'm back to running my Ryan Lee brand, like my personal brand. I only started back up about a week ago. I'm finally like on Instagram. I just put up my first YouTube video in over a decade, an hour ago. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm working from home. I have no bloat. I still have one nutrition company, our bone broth company, which is 99% of it's on Amazon. So that's on autopilot, which is great. And now I'm teaching again and I'm having fun and I'm spending more time with my kids. I've, I've always put my family first, but even more so. All the stress is gone and now I'm just teaching again and I'm loving it. And now here I am talking about gluten-free spaghetti. Okay. There was so much to unpack in that because I lot. think what we're going to be able to uncover in this is that you've gone from your initial win to continuing to build, right? And as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, we're the 1% of crazy. There's always a lot of ideas. So I want to actually focus on one of your main businesses called Freedom, right? And I want you to kind of dig into that story a little bit more of what I consider it to be is the Netflix for entrepreneurs. And that's how I got to know you um, outside of me and you having this conversation. I started my entrepreneurial career. I was in corporate for many years. I have a, a small business background with my family. I came back about nine years ago and I remember going through freedom. I remember like just like learning about you through the process and all you were able to do. So maybe if we can just... Give me, like, again, for the audience, a little bit more about that business. And then we're going to dig in in terms of how it happened. What was those spaghetti moments? What took you to that next level of seven figures and above? Yeah. So now, because, because I went on a kind of a business detox and a binge, right now, like, I, I actually recently sold Freedom. But I have it back. I'll tell you the story. Okay. Okay. So, okay. because I'm really focused back on the Ryan Lee stuff, but I'll explain it. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty interesting. So. When I was getting over this kind of weird funk and I gained like 40 pounds, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. I was floundering. I'm like, what do I do? I don't know what I, I knew I was good at recurring revenue. So I did what we all should be doing as entrepreneurs is get outside of our own industry, right? No matter what industry you're in. So what I did was I said, okay, this, and this was maybe six, seven years ago, I was looking at 
what are the hot things happening, especially in recurring revenue? What are the trends? What do things look like outside of teaching internet marketing? And I'm, Netflix, right? I, and I, I love Netflix. I love the way it looked. I love the design. But every membership teaching business all looked the same. They all had the same dashboard. It was all just boring blue hyperlinks. Everything looked the same. It was just kind of boring and blah. So I said, well, why don't I create the trainings, but make it look like Netflix and have it more affordable. Instead of paying 100 to 200 a month, let's start it at 30 bucks a month. And that's exactly what I did. It took me, and I, I move really fast. So it probably took me maybe four weeks to get maybe 50, 60 videos in there and just launch and just and go. Was and was this it, you? Like we're talking Netflix. So guys, if you're listening in, this is like coaching videos from Instagram tactics to strategy to brand. I mean, you, it, you had every thing in there. So that 60 videos, that first launch, was that with you or with your peers yeah. and colleagues? It was, it was a combination of, I had, you know, I'd been teaching marketing for at that point, like 15 years. So I had a lot of stuff in my vault, archives, I've done events, so I had sessions. So I loaded it with exclusive videos that were more, there were some short ones with me doing like a little five minute training. Hey, here's how to get better open rate, right? But then there was a bunch kind of like what we're doing right now, where I would interview experts, but I never called them interviews. And they weren't just face-to-face -face things. They were always screen share case studies. So I, mm. if, if I had you on, I'd say, okay, Sima, let's throw the spaghetti out. We're opening up your website. Let's see your site. Okay. And I'd say, okay, why'd you put this headline? Tell me about the pricing strategy. Let's open up your membership. So I, it was more like really super, super tactical. So it was a bunch of those. And then I went to a couple of people I knew that did events that had videos from events like trainings. And I'd say, can I put them in my site? I'll put them in for like maybe six months. It's going to get you exposure and you'll, maybe you'll get some new customers out of it. So I didn't actually pay for the licensing of it. So I had, so I had a preloaded with, with that as well. And at, so I just, and I was pretty aggressive where I was recording a lot of videos and there was a time when I was adding a new training every day. It was, it was, it was great and we had thousands of members and then I raised, the, I raised the price to $50. We had thousands of members, but I slowly started to get burned out. Um, and then other people started copying and people who I've, so I've been friends with everyone since the beginning. So I've known Russell Brunson since he's like in college and Ryan mm -hmm. Dice, I was the first guy to speak at his event for recurring revenue. So I've known all these people. And then, you know, Ryan comes out with, Hey, the Netflix entrepreneur. I'm like, they totally took my, so there was, there was more competition to coming out. But it was getting, I was starting to feel the stress. I was starting to get a little burned out. And that led me to just saying, man, what am I going to do? Like, is this, is this all I want to do? Which was almost this kind of coincided with my second wave of my health not being right physically. Like, you, you got to take care of yourself. You have to. And I just wasn't. And my, I started gaining weight, my joint pain. Um, and then... I finally said, you know, I'm taking care of my health. That's it. I'm dedicating myself to the health. And I lost all the weight. And I, I didn't need any medications for my autoimmune disorder. And I said, you know, I should get back in the health space because I'd left it behind. We had sold my other supplement company. And that's when I created a new supplement company. Uh, well, it was Nutrition Bars called Rewind. And it all of a sudden took off. So I was doing Rewind and Freedom. And it was, it was just a lot. So then I ended up uh, selling Freedom to two guys who were great members and mentees of mine, and they took it over and they ran it for about a year, year and a half. I can't get too many of the details, but let's just say it didn't, it didn't really work out. So unfortunately, I got the site back. I didn't want it back. I wanted it to really work, but I had no choice. I kind of took it back, ran it for another year or two, and just kind of played around with different business models and permutations. So now what it is, if you go to Freedom as of today, it's a free newsletter. It's the model is more like morning brew, right? Mm. And we're just, we're just kind of playing. Even right now, it's, it's kind of paused because I'm building my own personal brand. But that was the journey of freedom. But there's, there's a lot I can dig into. I was doing that. I had my e-commerce company. I've, I've done a lot. We, I got a lot of spaghetti. I even got some ravioli for you. I hear you, but I want to dig in, like really dig in. And I know that, and I want to talk about ryanlee.com, but Let's just go back to that moment when freedom was an idea, okay? And you're like, wow, like what you just said, and I, w I want people to realize that this is a golden nugget. Go outside your industry and look at the trends of what's happening, right? And I just, 
I want when he first said it, I, I wanted to like understand where you were coming from. And then I was like, exactly. I'm actually doing a lot of like 30 percent of my time I spend in the Web3 space because of what's happening with NFTs and blockchain and how that's changing business is right. incredible. Right. So I know with my clients and otherwise, there are going to be things that we're going to bring in. Right. That's just given what you did was just that for what was trending at that time. You created a model at that time. There was no real competition. How did you know? Like, what was your first client interaction like? What was your market research like? How did you know it was something that was really going to, or you didn't know? Like, what was your process? Uh, yeah, you you are a much more sophisticated uh, business person than I am. Uh, I tend to go purely just gut and saying, what the hell? Like, what have I got to lose? And minimizing my risk. Okay. So I looked at it first from what's the downside, right? What's, what's my potential loss? So I started looking at what's the actual cost to build this out? Like financially, how much is this going to cost me? And it wasn't expensive at all. I had a, a program I had from overseas was essentially a WordPress plugin. We just modified a little bit. I connected it with member mouse, which was like 99 bucks a month. I mean, maybe the whole thing all in cost me like $1,500. So there was, wow. there was really no risk. It, yeah. There's risk, but it, it, I, I didn't have to mortgage my house. And, sure. um, and it just took me, you know, a couple of weeks of dedicated time of recording videos and kind of organizing and getting some graphics together. But that was it. I said, what's the worst that happens? I make this thing live and I get 10 members and I'm charging month to month. So if I mm -hmm. get 10 members and it's, it's bringing in 300 bucks a month and it does it for two, three months and I'm like, it's not worth it. I'm not getting traction. No one likes this idea. I shut it down. I take my thousand dollar write off and I move on to the next thing. The other hand, if it works, awesome. Let's go for it. So that's, that was really my process. I, I don't, I never want to have regrets. I don't want to say, man, I should have done that. I, I don't want to be in my deathbed saying, oh man, I should have just taken a chance and done more things. So I'm all in. I think also when, so my mom passed away in 2010. She was only 63. Yeah. Thank you. And I was really close with her and my dad was close. So, it was the first time you lose a parent, even if you're older, even though I was in my 30s at the time, just like rocked my world. It, it devastated me. And it felt like, man, my, like this clock is kind of, it's ticking, it's moving. So I'm just going to go. I'm just going to lean into this, lean into life, fun, trying new things, and just throwing some spaghetti against the wall, seeing what sticks. You see, I'm going to keep referencing the spaghetti stuff. Yes, um, please. And like, it just, it just kind of sped up this feeling of like urgency, like, let me do it. Let me take a chance. So yeah. So I put it out there. I had already had somewhat of a following and, and a list and I went out to the public and even to my friends and my family and went on Facebook page and said, Hey guys, I'm trying this. Let's go. Like, come on in. Let me know what you think. That was it. Took a deep breath and, and jumped into the water and like, what do you mean? They said, I said, well, why do you, why do you have to scale? Your business is doing, you know, 1.2 million a year. You're, you're, you're netting, you know, 300,000 a year in profit. Everything's great. Your bills are paid. You have no stress. You said, you told me you're living a 10 out of 10 of your life. Why do you want to build a team of 100? And again, it's your, it's your priority. Whatever makes you happy. If you want to build a team of a thousand people, awesome. You want to build a billion dollar company, awesome. But maybe you don't. And, what my point is, you shouldn't build it because you think you have to, because everyone in your market's telling you you must. Like, they're like, oh, if you're not scaling, you're dying. And I don't, maybe I'm just salty. I don't care. You, you know, <laughs> but you, you brought this up earlier. Uh, people don't realize when you're growing your business and you're thinking about scale, it actually costs a ton of more money to be able to, you know, build that infrastructure while you're, and then it, a lot of times you fall out of love with your own business. And then it becomes more of, you're managing a job or it's no longer this exciting entrepreneurial thing. But I think it really depends on, I always tell people what with growth, it really depends on what, how you define growth, because there are yeah. a lot of people that are solopreneurs or have small teams and lifestyle is everything, but they want a substantial amount of income. So that business model looks different than somebody who wants a 10, 20, 30, 100 thousand person team, right. And really building in a different way. So I think yeah. that comes down to goals and stuff. You, you know, you shared a couple of things that we fortunately or unfortunately have a couple uh, things in common. So my dad passed when I was 23 in a very oh, tragic sorry. way. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he is the reason why I do what I do every day. He put a lot of 
focus on entrepreneurship and community building and specifically in this area. And so that has been a, a catalyst. And I also got diagnosed with uh, Sjogren's, uh, an autoimmune, I've had a PE. And that, what I, you know, you said a midlife awakening, I call, I mean, a midlife um, crisis, I call it midlife awakening. It's kind of like now you're ready to be aligned to actually what you want. I always feel like when your body is off, and this is just something for all entrepreneurs or just people in general to know, it's like stress is a killer of a lot of things. Inflammation is a killer of a lot of things. And that's just your body telling you signs that something is off in your life. That's my opinion, right? Because I feel like people get sick when they're unaligned. And I'll go back to, again, why I start, why I do what I do, why I start this podcast with in the world of entrepreneurship, right? And I'll give you a quick story. Like my parents started the first Indian vegetarian restaurant in Washington, D.C. Immigrants from India came here with nothing, did really well, started working when I was 12, all that stuff. But it went from doing really well and scaling multiple locations, all this stuff to close to bankruptcy in the 90s. And so I learned at a young age, Ryan, like, God, when things are going well with the founder side, it's like you have a different level of confidence and swag. But when things are not going well, which if you look at the numbers of entrepreneurship, you know, there's relationships, health, there's so much going on financial that what I keep seeing is there are a lot of people working so hard in their business that taking that moment to say what's working, what's not, how do we quote unquote scale, but more so get that clarity of what is it that we're trying to create so that we can build sustainability in our model and live the life that we want or whatever you desire your growth definition is. So that's what I'm uh, trying to get at. A couple questions outside. So it sounded like freedom was this incredible journey. It had its ups and its downs and it continues to be part of your life, right? Like, tell me like, that mindset, like, what do you think entrepreneurs need, like, in terms of the mindset to go through those ups and downs, those ebbs and flows, right? Like, what does that look like for you? You know, the number one, the, the number one thing you need as, as an entrepreneur is resilience. You really do. Like, because no matter what, you're going to get knocked down. You just will. It's not a question of if. It's just, it's simply a question of when and, and how hard. But you will. You're going to face you can have the most perfect business, the most perfect business model. You can have the perfect funnel. Oh my God, it's great. And everything's working and my Facebook ads are working and we're scaling. And all of a sudden, the Facebook algorithm changes or your, your ad isn't, isn't working anymore. Something happens, right? We had one ad that we've scaled. We were spending $25,000 a day just on Facebook. And then there was one day where there was something wrong with the cart, and, but we didn't catch it for a few hours. So, you, you know, you lose like 10 grand, boom, like, like that. So things happen. It just does. And you have to have the resilience and you've got to brush yourself off and get back up. Um, if you're building a business that's very, very relationship oriented, like you're in the weeds with your customers, maybe you run coaching groups and, and you might have a lot of coaches on here. I'm not sure, but there's going to come. A, so when that time happens, when things get hard, if you, if you truly don't love serving your tribe, you're going to have an even harder time getting back up. And there are people, and, and I know people who've made a lot of money with products that are not matched up with markets they love serving. So maybe they say, oh my God, this is a hot market, you know, whatever it is, uh, weight loss pills, right? And I'm serving like 55 year old women. And it's like a 21 year old, like Tad and dude, he's like, dude, I don't care about them. I just want to make the money. When things get hard, he's not going to care about that customer. So you really have to be aligned. And anytime I've had a business that didn't work as well as I thought, or I got burned out, or I was feeling really stressed, it's usually because I wasn't aligned with who it is I'm supposed to be helping. And I, I've, I've done this exercise, and it seems to put it in the real world versus just talking about it theoretically. So imagine you, Seema, or whoever you listening, sure. the millions of people listening right now. That's um, right. Let's go. You've got, see, look at that. We're going for Let's it. Let's go. Um, yeah. You're, you, got, you just rented a ballroom at the Marriott. You got 300 of your fans. So whatever topic, I don't care. Maybe you talk about real estate investing. You're up on stage. You're rocking it. Real estate investing. They're taking notes. Everyone's loving it. 12 o'clock comes, right? It's lunchtime. Do you, A, say, oh my God, it's lunch. Awesome. I can't wait to jump off the stage and sit down with them, have lunch and talk and talk about real estate in their life and just get into it. Or B, it's lunch. I'm out of here. I'm going to go in yeah. the green room. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk to these people. They're so annoying. They're going to ask me questions. If it's A, congratulations. Like 
you're serving the right people. If it's B, let's think how to get to A <laughs> because you're going to feel so much better. And not only that, not only is that going to help you with resilience when things get rough, your marketing is going to be so much better because everything you do, everything you say, all your words from the headline of your subject line, you're, what's going to happen is you're going to start getting comments on social media. You're going to get replies, your email. Oh my God, Seema, it's like you're reading my mind. And I get that every, and I'm not exact. I know people exaggerate. Oh, I'm getting thousands of them. I don't get thousands. But every day, at least once or twice, I get someone saying, oh my God, it's like you're reading my mind because it's, they're, they're my people. They're my tribe. So get there and it's going to help you with resilience. 100%. I always say when you align sort of your strengths, right? Like it's like, what do you do best? Who do you serve best? Who do you want to serve? And then you're focused on the transformation they're seeking. Like, holy shit. Like that is like you're answering their prayers. And when you get to that, that's what that's when magic happens. So I actually have a question because you have like, again, you've had a journey of different models and business models. And, you know, mm -hmm. who's listening? There are going to be people in a lot of people in the service industry, but there could be not just coaches, consultants, there can be, you know, product people as well. So I want to actually go into your e-commerce side if you're OK with that. All right. Absolutely. So rewind supplement company. Obviously, you've had an autoimmune inflammatory inflammatory autoimmune of some sort so yeah uh, psoriatic arthritis okay psoriatic arthritis yeah. let's talk about because i always say you know you hear this thing make your mess your mission right like mm -hmm. all of these things as entrepreneurs that's what we get excited and you know think about like how can i solve for that right this market i'm familiar with it because one of the first partners i had he's a celebrity coach and trainer has a supplement line i was helping him build in it but it's also super, super competitive. So can you kind of maybe now let's, we did the freedom side, which was your service side. It was the Netflix for entrepreneurs. And we went through the ups and downs, but you did really well in that side of the business. Mm -hmm. Now you started a second business while <laughs> like right. you had that. And I think that's also something for the entrepreneurs listening in to understand is like, when you have something up and running and there's stability and it's building and it's growth, then move to the next idea. Don't try to do everything all at once, which is what I heard from you. So let's get into Rewind. Where? Let's just start with the idea. What was that moment for you? So I had built two previous supplement companies before because I was, I was kind of the guy. I, I don't mean this to sound bragging. I was really the first one to teach online fitness marketing. Because I had early success, other fitness pros were like, well, Ryan, you're doing this thing called online fitness. What's that? Can you teach me? So hmm. everyone who's a big name now in online fitness was either my direct student or a student of my student. So like Jeff Cavalier, who's the number one YouTube fitness guy, he was my client. Mike Geary, who basically runs the online health space, was my client. So all these people kind of started. So I created a supplement company as the back end for all of them. And we were just on fire. It was great. Then there was a big down. I, that's a whole nother story. I had a couple partners. So then I ended up, I left the nutrition space for a long time. When I was diagnosed with my autoimmune disorder, I'd been out of this nutrition space for years. I'm like, you know what? Let me start something back up on my own. Let me come back to my health. Because what I found for me for inflammation, it was, it was the dairy and the gluten and the sugars. At the time, I'm like, you know what? I'd love to create a green drink, but I, I, and I tried experimenting with a few and they just tasted terrible. I'm like, but what about bars? I love bars, but all the bars are either whey protein, which is dairy, or they're really high in sugar and calories, or like 600 calories, or they taste terrible. Let me create mm -hmm. a bar that tastes really good, that is non-inflammatory, that has really good ingredients, that doesn't have a lot of sugar. It's a date-based bar. And that was the first idea. That was the first bar. And I called it Rewind for two reasons, because I got my health back. So I kind of rewinded the clock, like rewinded the years. But also, um, because I was born in 1972, I, you know, grew up in the 70s, but really I was an 80s kid. So rewind has that double meaning of a VHS tape, rewinding the tape or, you know, a, a Walkman. So I had that double meaning. So even the first iteration of our bars, the box looked like a boom box and we called them a boom box of bars. So I, I kind of, I wanted to have a nutrition company that was fun and light and had that little bit of a retro thing to it that had a little bit of the 80s. So I was talking to people who were, you know, late 30s to 40s and even 50s. And that was the, the initial thing. And I, I went out to, I didn't have a nutrition uh, list at that time. So I went to my business people, said, hey, if any of you are interested in this, check it out. Like it was my, it was my freedom list. They weren't fitness people, but who doesn't want to have a good bar? And then I went to 
my own social media following, just my family and friends. And I started filming videos. I called it Behind Rewind. And I was like, hey, here's a new bar I'm testing. I can't wait to share this with you. And that's a little lesson is that if you're building something, document what you're doing. We were so sometimes we're scared to share ideas. We're like, oh, someone's going to, no one's going to steal you. Just go for it. But if you're a decent human being, there's a lot of people that are rooting for you. Family, friends, people you went to high school with, like you'd be shocked who wants you to succeed. So share with them. Hey guys, it's Jenny. And I am so excited because I'm working on this new product. So I want to show you a little video and um, that's it. More to come. Like just lit. It doesn't have to be so sophisticated. It, mine was with my iPhone. And I made sure though, like when I did this, as you said, there was stability with freedom. I Now I, I kind of go, back and forth because I know people listening to this, I'm sure if you're entrepreneurial at all, at all, you have more than one idea and you want to do multiple things and you want to do multiple businesses. Don't, with the caveat, until your first business has at least a certain, whatever that threshold is. For me, it's like if my business isn't doing like a million bucks, I'm not looking to start another one. I want it stable. I want systems. I want everything in a process because it, it's challenging enough to build a business, whether it's a, a service-based business, product-based business, it's hard. It's challenging enough to stand out now with competitors and everything between a website and if you want to do social media. And there's Facebook and there's Instagram and there's now there's freaking TikTok and there's and there's always something new. There was Clubhouse last year. Like there's always something. Right? So it's it's challenging enough to do it for one brand. Doing it for two isn't twice as hard. It's like ten times as hard because then you got to comment and answer questions to customer support and. Uh, that's why you got to be really careful spreading yourself too thin. And I see it all the time. Like they'll say, Ryan, I've got, you know, I want to create a fitness product because I'm really passionate about fitness, but I want to create a business coaching because I love coaching business. And I also want to do, you know, my wife's really good at travel. So I want to do a travel re company. I'm like, you're insane. Do one, Can't do it all. get it to a million. Don't even, don't even think about the other thing till you get this one thing up. Yeah. And even yeah. that one comes with so many complications. So getting oh that God. one clear, God, oh my God, the ups and downs. I actually though, what one of the through lines for you, and it's so fundamental in business, especially on the online side, but in general, is that community building because you actually had a list to sell to when you were, you know, because a lot of times people are working so hard in their business that they are not even building the community aspect, their email right. marketing, any of that. And it sounded like you started that pre-freedom when you had your oh, first yeah. two, you know. So maybe let's foundationally talk about the importance and how, because then you had someone to speak to, you know, and how that process it, went for you. It's everything. Your, your list. And not just your list, the relationship. Because we sometimes we throw around that word, my list and numbers, and we... We forget they're human beings. Like you go to, if you go to any marketing event, how big is your list? Oh, I got 35,000. Oh, I only have 2,000. It's, it's 2,000 human beings and mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and husbands. Yeah. Like they're human beings and we forget that. So they're real people. But I, when I first started, I, when I started learning about marketing in the late 90s, I saw a bunch of smart marketers saying things like, you really should build your list. Like you should have an email list. Because don't forget, this was before, this was before YouTube, this was before Facebook before yeah. even before like Friendster and what was that other I forget all the social media. yes My exactly space. before that so there was <laughs> yeah. none of that stuff so you had no choice but to build a list so I've always had a list and I've always communicated with my list I email my list almost every day I call it daily ish always communicating daily -ish. yeah my daily ish newsletter um, and always communicating every day you're communicating yeah for for years it was every single day now it's more like every other day um sometimes i'll do two three days in a row and then take a little break for a day but it's almost every day and it's it's always there's always a little bit of a story but there's the whole idea behind the email is to it's it's like edutainment right it's educating it's entertainment but it's they should always walk away with at least one practical tactical thing no matter mm -hmm. what it is you're doing so it can't, and I, I see people make this mistake, not just in email, but in social media. They make it all about them, right? Look how great I am. Hey, just, just, it's so annoying. They're taking, you see all these pictures of them, like, you know, this pensive look. I'm like, you didn't just spontaneously, just, like someone took that picture. Just 
it's it's not about you it's about them so give them something because if it's just story it's, if it's just about how awesome you are and there's no meat they're going to be like all right this is kind of shallow i'm going to leave so you always have to have at least one thing they can walk away with but if you don't communicate if you're not in front of them they're going to get about you and mm -hmm. you say well ryan isn't aren't you bothering them if people are interested in the topic they will read five emails six emails ten emails there are people who are obsessed with news on whatever side of the spectrum. Fox News, they'll watch it five, six hours a day. CNN, they'll watch five, six hours a day. Don't tell me, you know, if there's an email about a, a conservative thing or a liberal thing and if, whatever they're into, they're going to open the email. The same as you. But if you, but, right, but if your email is only pitching and here's my new affiliate program that I just saw and here's this thing and you're always selling, then they're not going to open. And I think most marketers teach this kind of hyper aggressive marketing. And mine is, Stop that. Stop sounding like an a-hole copywriter and just write a letter like you're writing to a friend. Imagine you're writing to a friend. Like if I was writing you, hey, Seema, how are you? Good to, good to hear from you. Like when you emailed me back, I didn't say, who else wants to be on my podcast? Like it's just, but that's how we start writing, communicating. We're like, well, why don't people respond? It's because you sound like a robotic moron. So <laughs> you've got to have, you've got to have a tribe and you've got to communicate with them. And what happens is I think sometimes we're scared of doing it. Number one, we say, well, what am I going to talk about? I have nothing else to say. It's because all they do is focus on the tactics. They don't, and that's a whole nother story, but we, and we can get into that. But they're just, now I lost my train of thought, but they're, they're scared. They're scared to email or like stay in a lane because they feel like, well, if I choose this, I'm stuck here forever, right? If I write about, I don't know, see, I'm a pick, pick a, you don't have to say the person's name, pick one of your, someone in your, in your tribe, but like, like what market they're in. Engineering. Yeah. Let's call them engineering specialists or okay. you could do fi financial planning. You yeah. could do business growth. Anything yeah. that goes to you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> engineering. That's fun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so not very intelligent people in the engineering. So <laughs> so let's say um, you, you don't want to talk about you, you you don't want to talk about a specific thing of engineering. I, I couldn't even pretend to understand anything about engineering, but because you don't want to be pigeonholed in that. But People will follow you. Like you have to look at it almost like, sounds weird, almost like a superhero. Like it's a superhero journey, right? You're going to, you're going to change. You're going to evolve. And as long as you're always being you and true to yourself, there are people that will follow you. I've had people follow me that are still on my list from 20 years ago who saw when I was a fitness pro and then teaching fitness marketing, then teaching marketing, then back to fitness and teaching business again. And they stayed with me the whole time. And they would this buy is it. really important because I, I feel like this is an area, especially when people have two target audiences with their own businesses. It's like, mm -hmm. how do you talk to the consultant market and someone in a, a, like a, a further phase or, you know, and they're different phases. So how do you connect even in that? Because you haven't gone from different industries mm -hmm. even. Right. So if you have if you have a, a service that you could serve two different audiences, because they always say lead with one. Right. So how right. does that work in, in this? In the well, if they're two, if they're totally it's it's a challenge if it's the same industry and the levels are really different. Right. Because then it's like, what do you do? You eat. You have two options. Either you play the middle and you kind of water it down a little bit. It's better to air on the side of a little bit more like advanced because then the people who are beginners can look up to it as opposed mm -hmm. to if someone's advanced, they don't want to learn the basics. But what I would say, if, if there's a definite difference, I would separate, I would have two different lists. And there's some, there's some emails that can overlap, but if they're the same industry, if you're speaking to engineers and one is right out of MIT and the other one's been an engineer and designed, you know, you know whatever, the, a, a mountain or a mountain. A bridge, right? A bridge, yeah. So there's, there's, then I would have probably two different lists. But you, you do, this is, this is a really important thing to know, Seema, is that people are on different phases of the journey. So I use an example of guitar, right? So let's say someone wants to play guitar. And, and if the first, like right now, they're like, okay, I, I want to learn. What's the first thing they're going to do? And what's the first thing they're going to be interested in? I don't even know what the chords are, like just learning the basics. Even before that, what kind of guitar do I buy, right? Like, they don't even know. They're like, do I get an acoustic? Do I get an electric? What are the brands? I have, like, they're at such beginner level, right? And then you start playing, and then you move to the next level. You're like, okay, 
now I've got a guitar and now I'm starting to learn. Now I want to buy everything about like the basic, the chords and the chord progression. And then you start getting good enough. And then it's like, okay, let me learn a song. Let me learn a Dave Matthews song, Rolling Stone. And then you start learning songs. And then it's like, okay, let me learn original songs. And then maybe you start getting good enough. And now you're starting a band and you start gigging, but they're all on different levels. So if, if someone on your list is, is wants to learn about guitar and they, like one of my good friends has been a professional guitar player for like 35 years, right? Hmm. If, if he's on a guitar list and one email is, you know, here's how to pick out your first guitar, he's gone, right? So that's why sure. you have to know kind of who you're talking to. So I would say in those cases, I would have two lists. And that's why it, in the best scenario, go after one of them. Say, okay, here I am and I speak to the expert guitar player or here I am and I'm teaching you the absolute the basics. basics, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Because it is, important. it is, yeah, it's, it is, it is tough to speak to two different people because then your content you end up going in the middle. It becomes kind of vanilla and a little bit boring. And then it and doesn't really resonate unique. with either. Yeah, hundred right. percent. So, um, how did you in the beginning when you were going through that phase of like, all right, I'm in fitness and now I'm teaching, right? So I talk a lot about this concept of you know you start off as a generalist, you go into a niche, you eventually you can become a sherpa, which then people are seeing you but there is imposter syndrome and all that right? right and it's like what like so how did you get through that like you know what like i can do this like it's not what was that phase for you you know at the, at the beginning I, I have to admit i was i struggled a little bit with that very very beginning because here i was you know in my 20s now i i, was, I ran track all through college and i was captain i went to national like i had a good track career and i was always training i was training since i was 12 years old so i felt like I had a really good knowledge of it. And then I put myself through graduate school. So I had a master's. So I felt good. But there were some strength coaches that had been in the industry for like 30 years. Um, you know, this guy trained Michael Jordan, all this stuff. And I would write an article. I re I'll never forget this. Um, I was doing this all part time and I was still working at the children's hospital. The Internet was terrible back then. So I'd go to the public library during my breaks and I wrote a newsletter. And one guy's writing back, you're wrong with this. You know, it's hip flexion, not abduction and blah, blah, blah. And I felt, I'm like, no, I don't. And I felt like so low. I'm like, I can't believe, like, who am I to talk about this stuff? But then I, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I, I can't worry about that. I've got to do what I like, stay in my lane, do my thing. And I learned at an early juncture that no matter what you do, no matter what you say, you are not going to please everybody. You are not. And especially... If you're, if you're teaching to people, especially in an industry, any kind of industry, there's going to be colleagues who don't like what you're saying, who would think, oh, you're wrong or you're selling out or like no matter what you say. So it's just part of the game. And you, I, look, I don't, sometimes I, I'm from New York. I like ruffling feathers a little bit. I admit that. I like causing a little ruckus. But uh, if you are causing a little bit of a ruckus with your colleagues, it means you're probably doing something right. Like when I, then when I started teaching marketing, I didn't, I wasn't going to, but I kept, I'm smart enough to listen. So I, I kept getting emails. Hey, Ryan, could you teach me how to market my business? Could you, and they kept asking me, I'm a trainer. I'm like, yeah, it's easy. Just do this. So then I started teaching that and that I felt pretty confident about because I was pretty early in that game, but uh, it does take a little bit to get over. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to hit a fun little thing here. I don't know if it works. <laughs> <laughs> a learning riverside that was fun anyway i just wanted to say that was a lot of gold and the reason why that's a lot of gold when you think about um you know there was a two-parter in there because like they're always going to be call them haters call them people with different perspectives but your perspective is what makes you unique and different and that comes from your convictions your results your experiences so no one can take that away from you right and I think like, you know, you just have to be, and this is, goes back to the word that you were talking about all entrepreneurs should have is resilience because resilience is not just in the ebbs and flows of the ups and downs and sales and other things that happens when there's comparison and happens when other people are like, oh, like, why are you out there saying something different than what the establishment has talked about? And that's actually the beauty of why you have a business in the first place. So I, yeah. I and then the second thing you talked about is the evolution. And I think, you know, listening to, you know, having a community to be able to even to listen to is important as step one. But when you're hearing things like, hey, I need this, I need this, I need this, you know, like then it becomes like, wow, you should really be thinking about that because you're, if that's something that's aligned to you, of course, right. you know, right? right. And, and it felt like that teaching side of your business went, 
from a true evolution of like, now that people are seeking how I did well here, mm-hmm. let me teach it. And then it expanded from there into freedom. Yeah, I, I thought it would, it would kind of be fun to do. I, I hadn't thought, again, when I started, that wasn't the goal. The goal was to do the online fitness. It wasn't to teach business, but it just kind of happened. And I, the, the, big, the big eye-opening thing was when I went to, I, I was asked to speak at a big marketing event. This was early 2000s. I'd met a guy online, Yannick Silver, and he had these big events, actually in, in, in your area, in like the Washington, D.C. area. And he said, hey, do you want to come speak about membership sites? I'm like, sure, because that's what I built. I built the world's largest, the world's first sports training membership site. I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll come talk about that. That'd be, that'd be fun. And when I spoke, you would have thought I would, like Elvis came back from the dead. Like there was a rush to talk to me. I, I, there was 50 people surrounding me. Oh my God, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And can I, you know, can I ask you a question? Can, God, so many, can I pick your brains? So that I'm like, Wow, I don't, is... Do you? How do you feel about that question? The pick your brain as a girl, like you know, somebody who's a strategist. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like I, oh, I, I, I give, I try to give I, as much value as possible. But, but that word it is drives tough. Me not, yeah, it's well, it's even just tough. The, the visual right. of it, like someone with a pick and just, like, <laughs> it's just there's nothing about that I like, especially <laughs> when that's the first interaction. Hey Ryan, I saw your thing. Can I pick your brain? I'm like, well, what do you do for a living? You know, mm-hmm. well, I, I'm a doctor. All right. Can you go give an exam for like, I, I, I just don't, I don't get, I, I could never do that. If, if there's someone I like and respect and I, I would love their thoughts, I'd say, Hey, Seema, I, I love what you're doing. I'm such a big fan of your podcast. Can I please pay you for an hour of your time? And you may say yes or no, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like the pick your brain. But anyway, that was the big, that was the big aha where I'm like, wow. So then I created a product with my friend and we called it membership site bootcamp. We did a two day event. We, we had a film crew and. Man, so the first week that sold one, God, now I'm going to sound like some guru a-hole, but that sold 1.7 million. Yeah. In the first week, $1.7 million. Wow. Now, again, that was not 1.7 in my pocket. I had a partner, we had affiliates, but it was still a really, really good, more than I would have made working at the children's hospital for 50 years. So I'm like, man, people will pay a lot for like business information. So that's when I started getting more and more into that. World. Just curious, how much did you sell that program for? That was if you remember. I, that was around fifteen hundred, and that was that was the first that was the most expensive at the time because until then the price for courses this was early two thousands the the ceiling was like a thousand, so we mm-hmm. caught, we made it fifteen hundred. They got the recording, and then we did a live. I think it was like eight weeks of of live calls online with that so, something of that nature, yeah. So what I heard from you is you became the number one membership site. Is that what I heard? From I you? was the world's first sports training membership site. So I had been writing articles about sports training for free for about three years. This and was I was in the back in the day. This was back, you know, in the day. late yeah, 90s yeah. to 2001. And then yeah. I went, I basically took everything. I put a password protected thing around it and said, now, if you want access to all this and all these other things in a private forum, now, I think at that time it was like $50 a year. But I was the first one to do it in the sports sports training. There was one guy that was doing it in health and wellness, but I was and I was the first one in ClickBank to do it. So it was kind of a it was I was definitely ahead of the curve at the time. But it was fun. I loved every minute of it. Yeah. Yeah. So RyanLee.com, that's where you're at now. Listen to all this evolution. It's so fun to speak to you about it. So let's talk about what does that look like? I feel like you're, are you at that spaghetti stage right now? Or are you clear? Like, what's that look like right now? Yeah, I am totally making spaghetti. I'm yes. making spaghetti. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making some sauce. Uh, or if you're Italian gravy, um, I may even make some meatballs. I am, you know, because I, because I sold my nutrition company now and I only have my other one really that that's on Amazon. That I don't have to do anything. So I'm just at the, I'm just going to play. Like, let me see what, ha- let me have fun again. Let me, let me have a business that's really light. I don't have anyone working for everyone's outsourced. Like I have one person in the Philippines. She edits my videos. I upload it. I answer questions. I go on Facebook. I started a new group just for, I call it Gen X entrepreneurs. I call it Xpreneurs. So it's just okay. everyone like my age and we talk business in 80 stuff. So it's fun. So I'm just playing. I, I have a one program that no one even knows about. It's called the playground. Well, I have a lot of members on there, but it's like $90 a month. And every month I do a live training. So I'm going to create, I'm probably going to create another newsletter. I used to, I did that back in the day. I did about recurring revenue. I've got, a, I have a couple of courses that I just recently 
did is beta test that went really well. But but really, when I say beta, I mean like I'm gonna see how stripped down to the point. Listen to this. You're gonna love this stuff, Dina. Clearly you I, know me already. I love it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I love this. And I love just sharing this stuff. So yes. I was, you know, I'd been as I was selling the company, you know, you're a sophisticated business person that it, there was just, you, when you sell it for a significant fee, there's a lot of due diligence that goes into it. And for an entrepreneur like me, it was like going, it was like getting a root canal every day. I mean, they're going line by line on my, on the sheet. What's this item? And oh, I noticed this was $322, but in the p and was $325. What was the torture for months? So while I was doing that, I'd, I'm still like, let me play. Let me see if I could kind of sell some stuff with marketing and have fun. So I would do these four week beta courses on specific, on topics. So I did one about creating a, a membership site, going from zero to recurring revenue. The idea was to do it in 48 hours, but I taught it and people were, were creating their recurring revenue within 25 minutes, which was insane. Oh, wow. So I'd sell them for like a thousand bucks, but the way I sold it, I wrote a sales letter on a Google doc, a Google doc. That was it. I, mm -hmm. I did a Google doc. I shared the Google doc with everyone. And I said, if you're interested, here's the PayPal link. And that was it. And when they, they ordered, I put them on my email list to that specific, to everyone order. And every week I'd send out a Zoom link. And then when it was done and recorded, I'd give them the download. I'd say, here you go, download it, knock yourself out, done. I sold a lot of them. People were getting results. So I've been just kind of testing and tweaking ideas and seeing what's working, what's resonating. And now that I have my new site finally, and now I'm actually on Instagram, I just put my first YouTube. So I'm just playing. I'm going to create programs. Maybe I'll do, I used to do some big live events. Maybe I'll do a live event this year or next year. I don't Are know. you at legacy phase right now? Clearly, I mean, you were saying it's, this is like the fun phase for you, but is it you building a legacy? Is it uh, I, working I, through that? I think so. so. I definitely have so much in my head I want to get out and I want to just share. But there's also the idea of it's still really profitable. And the, the money is still kind of how you keep score, right? And there's a part of me. And the impact. Right, right. And there, there is definitely a part of me. And I, because I, I come from the nonprofit world that I struggle with. I'm like, you know what, man, I should just give it all away for free. But there is the, the realist in me knowing that how many free things have I downloaded? How many free PDFs that I never open? I never listen to. And I know the reality is you do have to have a little bit of skin in the game. As much as I hate to admit that, I, as much as I would love to just say, you give it all away and everyone's going to take action. Every friend who's ever been to my program for free or my vet, they never, they've never done anything with it. That's just the truth. It doesn't mean you have to charge 25,000 or 10,000 or five, whatever, charge what you feel comfortable. So I am, you know, I'm giving away a lot of content. I'm, I'm doing videos. Maybe I'll do a, I used to do a podcast a long time ago. Maybe I'll do one of those again. I don't know. Okay. I'm just kind of my, well, if you ever whole, want to brainstorm, I'm happy to be your sounding board. No, I, I appreciate it. No, I appreciate yeah. it. And, and even my sign off on my email is always let's play. Like, yeah, I just want to play. I just want to have fun and just kind of see where it goes. I'm going to listen to the market and I'm just going to create what people want and what brings me joy and what helps people and just see where it goes. I, it's, yeah. it's nice because I don't have any pressure. I don't have any pressure. Oh, I got to get this to two, three million or I got to get this to 10 million or whatever. I can just. You can just do whatever the heck I want. I think people are sensing that. Oh my God, he's so free. Let's just, let me go along for the ride. Just understand what you just said. You went full circle from owning a company called Freedom and still, but now you're yeah. free. And that's the whole, I always say, you know, like entrepreneurship is like living for a few years. Like no, people can't. You've seen this quote, right? So, so you could live a life like most people won't, right? And so mm. these people in the spaghetti phase, and I do have a question around like, what is your advice for them, right? Because you, I, you know, there's a lot of resilience. You take action clearly, right? You're yeah. an executor, right? So you get an idea, you take action. You were very good at community building early on. Like, you know, for the folks that are so head in and like, you know, into their business, you know, trying to get clients the results, like haven't really built their platforms yet because they're just focused as their you know, call it a service provider that looks like everybody else. Like, you know, like what's your, what's your um, advice to people who are trying to move from spaghetti to growth? Carve out, like go in your calendar and carve out 20 minutes a day. That's it. Give yourself, like we're talking tactical, 20 minutes and focus on that one thing. And maybe it's building your email list, or if you have a list, it's emailing your list and engaging, or 
Maybe for you, it's a specific platform. Maybe it's doing a daily YouTube video or a two minute Instagram reel or a TikTok video, like depending where you are. Maybe it's a LinkedIn post, but carve out 20 minutes and focus on growth. That's it. 20 minutes a day, every day, just make the time and go for it and stop overthinking. It's not going to be perfect. It never will be. Um, I look back at videos and I cringe at what I said, how I looked, what you know, just everything. It's, it's cr- I still have yet to ever watch a video I've ever done. Um, even this interview, I, I just can't watch it. I, know. I just, yeah, a, a, it's as hard. handsome as I am, I can't stare at my own face. No, I just, um, it's just so, it's so awkward for me to, to watch myself, but just get it out there and let's see what resonates, you know? And if it's, mm-hmm. if it's something on social, let's see if people are commenting and sharing and liking and giving feedback. Um, if it's email, let's see what the opens are. Let's see what the clicks are. Ask, say, hey, what do you think? Do you want more? Hit reply and let me know and actually reply to them. Um, so just doing you reply to small, me. That's why you're here right now from one. Of I your reply emails, to everybody. Right? And it's, it's, it's crazy how, how many times I'll reply. Cause I reply to every email. People say, Oh my God, is this, is this really you? Like you're replying to me. I'm like, of course I'm replying to you. I'm like, mm-hmm. come on. And people are like, Oh, I can't, I have to send you to my assistant. I'm too busy. No, you're not. I remember when I emailed Seth Godin to be on my podcast years ago, Seth's like, Oh yeah, I'd be happy to. I'm like, Set. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like you're not you're not too busy. You can you can do it. You know, you're not the president of the United States. You're fine. You have time. Uh, but but just commit to 20 minutes a day and knowing that it is going to it does take a little while. It's mm-hmm. you don't see immediate results, but it's all about consistency. And what have you got to lose? Like say to yourself, yes. if this doesn't work, if it doesn't resonate, am I real? Is this really going to be weighing on me in my deathbed? And the answer is probably not. If so. Yeah. You got more serious things to deal with that, that I can help you with on a podcast, but like what's most important to you? And then just like carve out that 20 minutes and just give it a shot. You, you honestly have nothing to lose with, with, especially with online marketing, with social media, with email. It's, it's most of the stuff is free. Email is almost nothing. Go for it. Like be you, use your personality, use what, use what makes you uniquely you. Don't feel like it always has to be this heavy, deep content. Tell stories, engage, give them one takeaway. People don't want to just talk about that specific topic. Yes, even the engineering geeks, not even engineers. And I have, I'm friends with some engineers, some really, really amazing engineers. But when we go to a cocktail party or out at, at the club or something and we're talking, we're talking about, oh my God, did you see that new show on Netflix? Oh my God, did you see the Giants game last week or the Knicks game? People have actual things outside of their business. Oh, how many kids do you have? Oh, you have two kids. Oh, one's in college. Where do they go? What do they study? Engage, talk about things, talk about. And here's one other thing. Talk about things that have nothing to do with what it is your topic is. So for example, engineering. So let let me ask you, Seema, what do you like? What's a hobby or a passion outside of business? Oh God! Um, Anything. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Yeah. yeah. What what kind of dancing? Just fun, hip hop, reggae, like you know, just fun. You go out and dance a lot. Go to I clubs. Used to. No, okay. I used to. What about know. now? What about what do you what do you like now? Do, is there is there a band you like, or a musician, or a type of music, or a type of movie, or a hobby, or something? Oh my God! Tennis, jogging, Tennis. Go, anything. What do you like? A little bit of everything. I, I'm an adventure. I love adventures, Ryan. I okay. like variety in life. That's me. I love adventures. That's do you the like truth. to travel too? I do. Okay. I do. Do people on your list know this about you? Hmm. I don't know. Okay. I know. I know my social media does. I don't think my list does. Exactly. Because sometimes we we sometimes we separate. Right. We're like, oh, the list is like this professional, and it's you know it's about business and and revenue and profit, bullshit. Let's bring that personality into the email. Everyone on your list should know that about you. They should know you're an adventurer. If someone's into motorcycles, they should know that. They should, everyone on my list knows I love the 80s and pop culture and stuff. Because I think when you blend that in, it, it gives you more dimension as a human being and it shows your passion about something. And even if they're not into, even if they're not adventurous, they don't want to leave the house or they're not into the 80s and they're like mm-hmm. 22 years old, they get, they, like people who are passionate about something. So I would say start adding that in and baking that in. People should know that about you. I love that. Yeah. 
Okay, a couple last questions. I know we're running over time here. I feel like I could talk to you all day. Instead, of, like I do want to ask, of course, like how can people find you? Of course. But I want to know how can we help you in your growth? And I think it's an important question because all entrepreneurs are growing, right? And we yeah. all need help. Just go to ryanweave.com and get on my list. Um, really. I mean, yeah, I could say, okay, visit me now. You know, now I have an Instagram and I just did my YouTube again. I have Facebook. But the reality is there's a good chance you'll never see anything I post, right? Mm -hmm. Algorithms. Come on my list. You'll see. You go to ryanweave.com. You can't miss it. It's right there. And uh, enjoy my world. Just just help spread the word. You know, just yeah. if, you, if you like what I'm doing, then you could follow me on social and you could share some stuff. You'd be like, oh, man, this guy Ryan's pretty cool or Ryan's a jerk. Don't listen to anything he says or whatever. <laughs> Just talk about me in some way. That, that would be it. I am working on, I haven't written a book in like 13 years. So I'm working on a new one. So I, yeah. Um, and people always want that. So that's probably going to be the one I come out with. Yeah. I, I, I look forward to w watching your journey because I'm in the process of doing the same. The From Spaghetti to Growth is the podcast launch and the book. So like, that's yeah. going to be an exciting journey. That's great. I, I love the name. I love the, the brand. Um, do you ever use the initials STG? No, should I? STG? Like, I mean, although it sounds know. a little close to uh, STD, but um, <laughs> a little too close. S STG. <laughs> but do you do you have a name like for your tribe? Like, do you like, hey, spaghetti heads or something yeah. like that? So th this is actually a newer brand. Like, Disruptive CEO Advisory is the, the umbrella. So there's disruptors, right? That's mm -hmm. sort of like the, the brand of the community. I know you advocate for that, but this is a new, it's a new, for me, this is putting a stake on the ground of how I serve people is at this phase, right? So yeah. when I came up with it, I was like, holy shit, I've been think trying to figure it out for so long. So now I'm going back to say, okay, how did all these brand elements come together? Because it's, it's an interesting There's one. so much you can mm -hmm. do. And especially like I see, even on our interview, I'll see above like your graphic and I see even the I could the color I could see you have a palette with the mm -hmm. yellow there's there's really good branding elements there but mm -hmm. there's so much visually and set like all the different senses the touch the feel the taste you could you know hey let's hey guys today is spaghetti Sunday you know mm -hmm. let's throw throw our ideas out there throw it against the wall um hey my spaghetti freaks like there's so much fun you can have with spaghetti let's you know what's our pasta of the day there's just a lot of really cool things you can do with that brand. That's that's why I like it. I I like that it's not what everything else, what everyone else does. And I think most people make the mistake of making their brands so generic. They're not getting outside of their industry, and they're just doing exactly what everyone else. The same color, the same words, the same phrases. And I love spaghetti to growth to growth because it's uh unforgettable like it's just so unique so i i like what you're doing i'm, I'm looking forward to the book and uh to seeing more of this podcast except amazing. i won't watch my own episode but i'll watch <laughs> the other ones <laughs> amazing listen ryan thank you so much for being part of this this is exactly the type of conversation that i'm looking to serve my audience with because there was i mean again you are a serial entrepreneur you've been through so many evolutions at the same time like how you got here you know it's like there were so many iterations of the process and my whole thing, I mean, I, I took away so much from this, but like, I want the audience to know it's like where you are when you first start is never where you end up, but listen to the folks that you're doing it. Focus on the one thing while you're building and then move on. I like your million dollar threshold. I think that's a really smart way of whatever that number looks like to you. So you built that in some sustainable way to move to the next. And I'm looking forward to, you know, I did join your new community in this way and I've been nice. part of, but and continuing to stay connected in that way. So thank you again so much. Really appreciate you. Thank you for having me, Seema. Hello, S the G tribe, AKA growth tribe. As an entrepreneur, I know time is currency and I don't take it lightly that you listen into today's episode of the From Spaghetti to Growth podcast. I hope it added value and I'm truly honored to be part of your entrepreneurial journey. Be sure to head to disruptive.ceo and the soon to be coming seemaalexander.com to grab today's show notes and free resources to uncover opportunities to turn your unique spaghetti into growth. If you found value in today's episode, please rate, comment, and subscribe on your podcast platform and keep listening. Look forward to seeing you on our next episode.